What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today I have six Rock Chip RK3399 powered single board computers that I kind of want to put up against each other. Recently I've acquired a few of these. I actually have six in this video, but I own a total of nine. I wanted to do benchmarks on every single one of them, but it takes a lot of time and I figured, hey, let's just go ahead and take these six right here. Because to tell you the truth, most of them perform pretty much the same. I'm going to run down the list of the boards that are in this video. We're going to go over pricing, power consumption, and then raw performance out of this CPU. First up, we have the Friendly Arm Nano Pi Neo 4. Now remember, all of these have the same exact CPU. It's the RK3399. I've done individual videos on five of these boards. I'm going to leave a playlist in the description if you want to check those out individually. But this is the smallest one out of the bunch. We have one gigabyte of DDR3 1866 megahertz RAM. It's got USB 3.0 and USB Type-C. Next on the list, another friendly ARM board. This is the NanoPi M4. These come in 2GB and 4GB models, DDR3, 1866, USB 3.0, and USB Type-C. A newer one on the market, this is the RockPi 4 by Radaxa. They come in 1, 2, and 4GB models. They do run DDR4, USB 3, and Type-C on board. This is the last friendly arm on the list. This is the Nano PC T4. This is actually one of my favorite RK3399 powered boards. We have 4 gigabytes of DDR3 1866, USB 3.0, Type-C, and it even has an M.2 slot on the bottom. Next, we have a bigger contender here. This is the Rock Pro 64 by Pine. They come in 2 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte models, DDR4, USB 3.0, USB Type-C, and PCI X4 on board. And finally, the Kadas Edge. Now this is the Edge with the Captain attachment. 2 to 4 gigabytes of DDR4, USB 3.0, USB Type-C. These are still on Indiegogo right now, so pricing is a little iffy, but we're going to go over that now. Running down the pricing list, we have the Neo 4. There's only one model with 1 gigabyte of RAM. It's $45. The Nano Pi M4, $65 to $95. Rock Pi 4, $64, $74, or $90, depending on how much RAM you want. Nano PC T4, $109 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. The Rock Pro 64 goes for $60 to $80, and the Kadas Edge is $99 on Indiegogo right now for the 2 gigabyte model. Not exactly sure how pricing is going to go after that, so we got some question marks here. So taking a look at these prices, these are all base prices. A lot of these don't come with power supplies, heat sinks, or even Wi-Fi, so you really need to think about that. Plus, you might want to include shipping. For instance, the Rock Pro 64 4GB model is $80, but when we add the Wi-Fi module, the heatsink, power supply, and a 16GB EMMC module comes out to $136.20. Now that's also including shipping here, they charge another $8 on top, so these do get pretty pricey. Another example is the Friendly Arm Nano Pi Neo 4. This is one of the cheaper ones on the list. $45 base price, but when you add the heatsink, 16GB EMMC module, and power supply, it's $72. Now this isn't even including shipping, but it's probably around $8 to $10. The Rock Pi 4B has everybody be. You get a 1GB board, power supply, case, heatsink, for $72 shipped. Now there is rumor that they do have a $32 1GB board coming out with no accessories, but we'll have to see. If they do put one of these out and we can get one shipped to the door for $40, it actually might be worth it. But at $72, even with a case, power supply, and heat sink, I think these boards are still way overpriced. Now it's time to move on to some performance testing. In this video, all of these benchmarks were run in Android 7.1.2. Now the reason I didn't use a Linux distribution is because Linux desktops on the RK3399 are pretty horrible. And by horrible, I mean the user experience isn't great. If you're just starting out with a single board computer, I would definitely stay away from the RK3399. There is no acceleration on the desktop without some heavy configuration. And even then, it might work in the desktop, but then your browser's going to slow down. And with some boards, you can enable Wi-Fi and your PCIe slot's going to stop working. There's just a lot of trouble with these boards right now. So I opted to use Android as a base here. Now some of these boards do have Android 8.0 available, but every one of them had a 7.1.2 build available, so I figured I'd go ahead and test that. 
First things first, power consumption. I'm using a kilowatt meter at the wall. I have not taken anything away from these readings or added anything to them. This is directly what it says on the watt meter itself. I know some of these can be inaccurate, but I wanted to keep it fair. I left it plugged into the same exact outlet and just swapped boards out. This is power consumption at idle. I have killed all background apps. I do have Wi-Fi enabled, and this is what I came up with. On the low end, we have the NanoPi Neo 4 at 4.1 watts. On the high end, we have the Nano PCT4 at 5.8 watts. Now, if you look down the list, there's not much of a difference between all of them here. So I'd say they're all pretty much equal. Now that NanoPi is very small and only has two USB 3.0 ports on it, and that could be attributing to such low power draw at idle. For 100% CPU load, I used an app called CPU Load Generator by a company called Salt. Inside of the app, you can run up to 14 different instances, and that's exactly what I did here. So on the low end, Rock Pro 64, I was actually surprised by this, 11.4 watts, Nano PC T4 again with 12.8. So the Nano PC T4 does draw more power. On to some CPU benchmarks using Geekbench 4. This is the single core scores I got out of all of these boards. On the low end, the Rock Pi 4 with 1,121. On the high end, the Nano PC T4 at 1,362. Geekbench 4 multi-core score. The Kadas Edge scored lower than all of these boards, and I was surprised by how low it did score. By the way, I ran each one of these tests three times and just took the highest score out of each one of those. So 1,916 for the Kadas Edge and 3,094 for the Nano PC T4. Now, if you run this on a modern smartphone, let's say even starting with the Galaxy S6, these scores are relatively low compared to something like that, but they're not bad for ARM-based single board computers. Heading over to some GPU benchmarks. This is GFX Bench T-Rex on screen. This is using OpenGL 2.0. The NanoPi Neo 4 fell behind everything, but the Rock Pro 64 actually jumped ahead higher than I thought. Now this is the highest scoring RK3399 board that I've seen in this benchmark. 3D Mark Slingshot. This uses OpenGL 3.1 or 3.2. NanoPi Neo 4 with a 516, very low score, and the Kadas Edge came ahead of everything with a 930. Looking at these scores, these are very low scores in terms of newer Android devices. And finally, 3 Mark iStorm Extreme. Neo 4 on the low end again, and the Nano PC T4 pulled ahead just by a little bit, right in front of the NanoPi M4. Now, if we do take a look at these scores and kind of average them out, there's not much difference between all of these RK3399 boards. Like I mentioned at the beginning, some of these boards do contain DDR3, some of them have DDR4, but they all have the same exact CPU and GPU. So if we take the average between everything here, it's pretty much the same across the board, even if the board has DDR4 or DDR3. Of course, some of these boards did benchmark higher than other boards in certain tests, but if we look at it as a whole, we're still on the same CPU, we're still on the same GPU. I think the only thing you really need to worry about if you want to buy an RK3399 board is the form factor in the end. Now that's if you want to buy one, and if you want my honest opinion, I don't think you should buy one of these boards with this CPU. This feels super rushed it feels like maybe rock chip reached out to all of these companies because they wanted to offload a shipment of chips they made and said hey here's an awesome deal i'm going to give you this many chips for a decent price make some boards and sell them if you think back to last year odroid actually announced one of their new boards that contained this exact cpu then about a month later they said we canceled the board because of ram prices but they were still making other boards and the ram was still in those boards I think what happened was they got smart. They realized that the RK3399 is not a great performer and kind of ditched it. If you absolutely need a low powered mini PC, that's exactly what you should get. I think you need to go x86, pick up an Intel N5000 or an N4100. It's going to perform much better than this here. Yes, you might spend a little more money, but maybe not in the long run. 
Some of these older used Intel NUCs and mini PCs on eBay are very cheap nowadays, and you can get out with buying maybe an i3 for the same price that you would have paid for, let's say, the Rock Pro 64 with all the attachments. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I don't know much about single board computers. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. If you got any questions, let me know in the comment section. And like always, thanks for watching.